Hello friends and today we will start a new series of workshops which will be related with a theme. So we will start today with discussing how is uh, the theme organized itself. So what is the technology stack behind it and what is the difference from the Magento front-end stack? Well, we all know what it is in Magento, so let's write it down on a board. Well, we all are familiar with Magento and how it works. We all know that it has a layout template system. So it has layout slash template system. It uses the PHTML format to declare the templates. So this is the templating. It also uses dot less files to declare styles. This is style, this is template. And it uses dot XML for layouts. Why can't we reuse it? Well, first of all, because following technologies are used for server side rendering. We are not a server side rendered application. We are client side rendered. What does it mean? It means that we are using a client's browser as a machine to render our data. So what we are providing is just an algorithm using which you can bypassing in it data. So I'm passing data, generate the HTML for your final client, for your user. And this is his browser. So we are creating an algorithm to render the HTML out of the data. The data is coming to us from GraphQL. So this is our GraphQL server, which is also known as Magento 2 in our current example. So Magento 2 is our GraphQL server. It sends some data to our client's browser, inside of which we are running the algorithm, which is transforming the code into the HTML and rendering to a client. Why is this an efficient approach? Well, of course, because now we know everything about our application. We have a power to immediately render any page if we have the data. And if we don't have the data, we can predict what will be on this page and render some placeholders. So it allows us to have very smooth browsing, browsing because we no longer see the white screens be be between pages. Nothing is loading. Everything, it, it, when something is loading, you're shown, you're uh, faced by placeholders and not the white screens because browser is not downloading the HTML document. It's just fetching the data. That's the big difference. Uh, and so we are having those smooth browsing and this means also we can animate the transitions. Animated transitions. Plus, it also allows us to make faster second page loads because now uh, we don't need to download the HTML every time. We can reuse the previous one so we can cache the HTML. And this is the difference between the SSR where the HTML is almost never cached in the browser, only on the server. So uh, faster, faster uh, websites overall. And not only this, we also have uh, nothing is render blocking in our case because uh, the scripts are used to render instead of uh, the HTML. So there's, there are a lot of pluses, a lot of benefits using the client-side rendering. And this is what new era of the web applications will be made of. So we have the client-side rendered application. And what it means is that it's rendered on a client. But you might say Magento card and checkout is also rendered on a client. Yes, I say to you, but the Magento cannot count herself 
as a single page application. So why? The single page application can only be claimed if every page of your application is rendered on a client. So this pluses smooth transition and faster websites are only benefits of single page application and not the client side rendering itself. So this means we cannot just take our old Magento with its template systems, uh, old styles and layouts, which are used to generate the HTML on the server and transform it to client side rendered application. We need somehow to change the stack and to change it dramatically. Well, not so dramatically. We want to keep our developers uh, healthy and happy. So let's find alternatives to each of those uh, parts of those uh, parts of the application. For templates, we can use JSX. What is this? I hope you can see it. JSX is the HTML like as well as the it's HTML like uh, syntax of uh, React applications. It allows you to uh, write the HTML in JavaScript code and uh, has the template string literals inside. So it allows you to uh, be just like in your PHTML templates, but now in the front end world. So the HTML like markdown language, markdown, markup language, I'm sorry, markup language. That's important thing. So if we're going here with a JSX, this means that for a layout building, we are going for React. So wait, this is JavaScript and this is JavaScript. Now this means that basically everything is working in one place and you don't need to know different uh, languages to write it down and you don't, you won't have any issues. So this means only JavaScript is, is used here for templates and uh, uh, layouts. And here we're using React classes classes. So instead of XML as a layout, we are now using the React classes to declare our rendering methods. And that's pretty cool. So React classes are used here. And uh, for less, well, we consider it less a little bit outdated. And we knew that the CSS syntax is pretty unique. And you can um, not, uh, no, it could not be hard. And we also knew that multiple of our friends were already using this. So we chose SAS uh, instead of less because it's in our uh, opinion, a little bit more formal and uh, more pleasant to use. So the SAS is here and uh, this is the replacement for styles. This is just a newer version of uh, S we are using SCSS to be more specific, which is a newer version of SAS. But overall, here is the full stack of ours. So it's React and SCSS. And uh, instead of uh, writing templates, and for templating, we're using the JSX. Well, you are afraid, I believe, a little bit about this word, the JSX. Yes, it might sound very, uh, very, I would say, <laughs> strangely, I, I'm afraid a little bit. But JSX in reality is just a way to do stuff like this. Let me erase because I assume we understood this part. Uh, so, so what's JSX? JSX uh, for you to not be afraid of it is just a way to write stuff like this. If you would do it in, uh, let's ta take jQuery for example, jQuery. What, or not jQuery, let's take a pure JavaScript better. So in pure JS, if you want to create some element, you write document dot create element, create element. Here you pass the name of it, the name of the element. Here you pass the uh, attributes of the element, for example. Yeah. And you might also pass the children of this element. Here is how it's done in pure JavaScript. And JS6 is actually a way to say the same. For example, let's call this a div and let's say div had a class called a and it had no children. So it will be an empty array. 
So JS6 allows us to do following. It allows us to write, for example, return, which is a normal JavaScript code. So this also would be a return of the element, let's assume it. Return. So we are returning the created element. And for JS6, it's just a way to write div class A, for example, and uh, close, close it down. So this is very, fam we are very familiar with this, right? But now remember you're doing this and writing this in the JavaScript itself. So it's very cool. And it's much more visual than this. Uh, document create element. But of course, React has some caviars and class is not called class, it's called class name. But overall, uh, it's pretty similar and the idea is the same. You can write your children here and for if you want this class name to be a uh, variable and to be dynamic, you can use the curly brackets and write the uh, values here like this will be known a variable inside instead of the constant a string uh, And it's very powerful language and it's much more visual than the pure JavaScript. So it's just a way to create an uh, Elements in the more uh, efficient way and more developer friendly. So don't be afraid of JS6 and for the react well, the React is also a great topic to discuss and some formats of React are indeed very complex and hard to understand. But for our case, we will only speak about class components. And why class components? Because we, Magento developers, are super confident in OOP world. So if I see something like class, uh, I, don't so, I don't know, like breadcrumb, bread, let's call it class bread, which would extend the component. This is immediately recognizable as, okay, we have some component abstraction and we have a bread, which is our current class. And for React, to make it a component, you need a render method. So you write a render here. And inside of this render, you might must return the valid JS6. So here goes the JS6 template, yeah? So this is a purest what you can get out of the uh, React class components. So uh, rendering something which returning JS6. Very cool. And why I'm saying that this is an alternative to the layout system? Well, because you can split your render into multiple functions like render uh, element one and this will be rendering element one and this will be a different function which you will be later able to extend override or plug into and etc of course we don't have very powerful functionality like we had in the layout system where we're, where we were able to take one element from footer and place it in a header with a few uh lines of the code of course not but uh, it is powerful enough to allow us to rearrange those elements within the uh, context of it. It allows us to uh, do anything with it, basically. And it also allows us to have them defined in one place. So the J JavaScript classes are very simple. They have uh, so-called React, um, so-called um, lifecycle. And uh, if you just learn it, you will be completely ready to develop on Scandi PWA. And remember, let me just show you what is the lifecycle events in uh, uh, React. If I type it down, it will open me just a single uh, page of the doc. And as you might see, it's not so huge. Specifically, if you write note, if you read not the documentation, but some articles on Medium, which I also recommend doing, because here you will find all the necessary methods you want to know. So you can see the render, which we declared here. Then we have the constructor. Then we have the component did mount and etc. So you have a very powerful tool to uh, basically define your layout. And uh, that covers up the stack of Scandi PWA, except, of course, the uh, 
except of course the data part because we are using GraphQL, but we will talk about GraphQL in a later video.